Lefty Lynx, you join the channel here over on Subscribestar. Be sure you join the Odyssey. It looks like the uh, banks are going to shut down bitch you. <laughs> sure would be nice if they didn't, uh, they weren't able to do that. So this rapper guy versus Disney, he's claiming, he's claiming a lot of, <laughs> a lot of things. But you know, just because somebody's half crazy doesn't mean the other half of the stuff they're saying isn't isn't valid. So he's claiming that Disney is more than just a company selling entertainment. It's actually selling cultural Marxist social reengineering. Ah, uh, no poop. Welcome to the party. I heard this referred to as Occam's razor at your throat. It's not Occam's razor. It's it's and I literally I just heard this the other day in the, in the YouTube comment section. It what it means is they want you to be gaslit into accepting the Occam's razor concept, but actually the real truth is hidden and more complex. But if you actually if you if if you start to go look for that hidden complex meaning, which you know Occam's razor is just an approximation. It's more true than not. That's all it means. Sometimes, yes, there are Machiavellian machinations and conspiracies that run the world. That's why the words exist. Um, but they use this, they're using this gaslighting technique to prevent you. Like, oh, it's just crazy for you to put on your tinfoil hat and go into that, you know, the Alex J territory. That's just, why would you want to do that? Let, let me poison the well and fruit of the poison tree and ad hominem and deflect. It's like, once people start going into those personal attacks, that should ping every every alarm on the radar is is when they deflect it and uh, start um, using you know those logical those argumentative fallacies type of things. So I've heard people on both sides of the political aisle say something a little little Mickey giving the Roman salute. Um, on both sides, probably can't the character probably can't bend his fingers. People on both sides of the uh, political aisle say something like Disney is just a simple company chasing profits. Occam's razor, move on. Don't stop to actually examine the situation. But on the face of it, it doesn't make any sense. You can clearly see that they're not just chasing profits, if at all. The vast majority of people are not into this BLT stuff that they put in their movies. Uh, the Eternals was one. I mean, the, the Eternals was one where it was more than just a background scene. Um, and then there's in, in pretty much all their movies are going to have something in a in the background scene, that, but you know something that they can edit out for China, <laughs> because they have principles, but only for the West. So I mean, if you look at it in terms of they have brainwashing only for the West, it's weird. It's weird. And then they had that other that animation, uh, Strange World, that didn't do too well. So, um, um, no, most people are not into that BLT stuff. Probably like 98% of the people are just, would be just fine with not seeing it. Um, there's no way, there's no, in no way sufficient support for this stuff. Much, uh, th such that it would be included in the shows. It doesn't make sense to include the BLT stuff that they literally have to edit out for the, those warm, sunny, sandy places and uh and, and china it's like it doesn't make sense that's how lack uh, low in demand it is like there's there's twitter kids who say they want it but if you ask people who actually have families and go to see these things or you they used to they don't want to see this stuff and disney's doing it anyway they're not doing it for the money their behavior does not match that conclusion for some reason people don't want to take in new information and, and reach a new conclusion it's like everything people learned is from Hollywood and government schools. And when you point out the bias of the source and present alternative evidence, like literally you could present them with a stack of books and they're like, but I saw this Hollywood movie once. Like, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> then the thing is, once you see it, you see it and you never, you can, um, you never go back to looking at government schools or Hollywood in the same way. Like you just assume it's crap right from the start and move on from there. Um, then they get they get kind of a triggered because it means that you're challenging their worldview and you know nobody likes to be challenged um, but you know like everyone who goes down the rabbit hole it's like it happens it happened to all of us so Disney could present a different perspective they could uphold God family nationalism <laughs> even saying those three those three words it's like oh my God I'm so triggered by these far right concepts oh you mean like stability and order literally literally he go boss. E a conservative asks why a fence is up before they tear it down. They didn't have to go down this globalist cultural Marxist pathway. That is by their own choosing. In fact, to their detriment, because it's costing them money. They are social engineering on a large scale. And in a commercial zone, America, there is no defense against this Bolshevik takeover. 
Unless, of course, there's an awakening to these issues. But as that rapper guy discovers, awakening people is like that scene in They Live, trying to get the guy to, uh, there he is, to put on the sunglasses. It's, that was like a 10-minute fight scene. It's so ridiculous. It takes a lot of effort to show people that Disney is actually evil, that the society is corrupted past the point of redemption. Um, reconstructing where we are to be this corrupted already means it is impossible to save all of it, but you can save some of it by forming a degeneracy reduced based community. Getting people to overcome inertia is like herding kittens, but it has to happen. Every little bit of degeneracy Disney pushes helps to move through the window. At some point, you just have to admit that the values that the mainstream is pushing are evil. It's like it's like uh, it's be, it's being pushed in government schools and there's no resistance to it because people will just get doxxed and fired. They have society trapped in this social pressure box. It's like, yeah, you still have free speech, but you really don't have free speech. Oh, well then, <laughs> sir, we need to do something about that because it's, that's an important concept to the, to the country and it's, it's weird that nobody's doing anything about that. They're just slowly acquiescing to this devolving society. Um, so there's no path out that is still within the system. So society just continues to erode and decay because the path out requires doing things differently and changing the narrative by first accepting that the narrative is a lie. Look at where society is now in general. The most hardcore prawn is available online and nothing stops kids from accessing it. Nobody has even tried to destroy that system. We just accept it instead of deconstructing it and dismantling it. Or Balenciaga, a story that was in and out of the media. Doesn't anyone want to look a little bit deeper into that story? I mean, that, like the, uh, so who are the two big people who are pushing it? Uh, Shoe on Head and Brittany Ventney? Who are they? There's these two girls on the internet, YouTube. Oh, seems like somebody, somebody, okay, I mean, it's great that they, that's great. It's great. Credit them for that, but it seems like there should be some other bigger channels looking into it. Like, everyone should be looking into it, right? Um, anyway, that story was just kind of a flash in the pan. Or will the mainstream media call it a far-right conspiracy theory? In a few years, they'll look back at Balenciaga and it's, to hear the young Turks talk about it, um, who is that girl got the nose job? Uh, the skinny girl, on, on one of the uh, the skinny girl with the nose job. I forget her name. Um, she was talking about it. She goes, she was thinking, uh, it's yeah, it's a bummer and all. It's a bummer about those kids and pushing, you know, child abuse. Yeah, that total bummer for sure. But it just, you know, it makes the right. It just helps the right. I'm like, what the fuck you? Do you have parasites in your brain? <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? And, and it wasn't just the Young Turks. There was another left-wing channel that talked about it. And they said kind of this, it was a, oh, Slate Magazine did an article on that. They said something similar. It's like, this is a real boon to the right. Like, there's no living with these people. I mean, they, like, these people are sick. They're so, there's, there's more than that, but I guess I can't go into it. Um, but I, my point was that in a few years, are like, are they going to look back at Balenciaga like they they look back at the Podesta stuff and or the um, the furniture thing and like all these other stuff? Like some are conspiracy theories, but some are not. But it's like we can we can use facts and evidence to discern which is uh, which is and which isn't because we you know we have we have the concept of, of due process or at least you know uh, a way of analyzing information. It's like we don't have to we don't. We don't need to poison the well. It's like the left wing seems real comfortable with doing that. So my point is, in a few years, like, is Balenciaga just going to be like, oh, it's, it's like that far right conspiracy theory dealing with, I don't know, Podesta and Clinton and all the other stuff. It's like, yeah, except, I mean, Balenciaga actually happened. And the more the media shies away from it, it kind of makes you believe that, oh, God, but there's a meme. I think I posted it on community pages. It, they... They post the, like a, a MAGA, fly, uh, MAGA hat and they go, in a few years, this is going to be considered the same as a, like a stars and bars and some other symbols. And it's like, you know, that could be interpreted many ways. Uh, maybe they were lying all the time. That's what people start to feel. It's like, oh, you see how the media treats Balenciaga. You know, maybe the media is lying to cover up other, other things. Maybe they're not far right conspiracy theories. Or maybe they started as far-right conspiracy theories, but they were correct. So like uh, Epstein's Island was a far-right conspiracy theory, except that it all actually happened. Of course, some of the trial transcripts are missing because Alice and Nathan concealed the contents because she uh, 
wanted to protect people and not, you know, the open marketplace of ideas, the sunlight is best that people have a right to know, protective. No, no, she wanted to protect the abusers. That's weird. Or she wanted to protect somebody who was a, a very important person. So she later got appointed to the Court of Appeals by Biden. So congratulations to her. That's Judge Allison Nathan, who was on that uh, Maxwell case. Weird. Um, it would be nice to see who Maxwell and Epstein were trafficking kids to. Doesn't it seem odd that the men and women who visited the island aren't being prosecuted? How am I connecting Disney, Balenciaga, uh, Epstein, and Brittany Ventney's massive boobies? It's all the slippery slope of permissive degeneracy that got us here, and there is no solution within that system. Even the pronoun thing. Disney is doing away with gendered greetings <laughs> because they believe that there are more than boys and girls, except that they're not. I mean, there's male and, men and women, which I guess falls to male and female. That's all there is. <laughs> That's all there is, unless I've been missing something the whole time. It's like male and female, and then from that come boy, girl, man woman and then from from the, the sexual binary comes the gender binary if gender derives from sex then there's only going to be two um all this stuff moves a window further into the absurd asking for somebody's pronouns presumes the validity of the narrative what happens if you just say that you don't believe in assuming you you know your place wouldn't just get fired for this kind of stuff if you could talk freely she said no i don't believe in that in that concept i think uh, pronouns are sex-based and sex is immutable I mean, what happens? Would they accept your diversity of thought? No, because they have to die on every hill. At this point, we have radically different worldviews. We have different versions of reality. We have different definitions for words. We have concepts that relate to different definitions. They don't create new words. They're Bolsheviks. They try to subvert and corrupt the existing words, which is why they have to censor. They can't exist in an environment of free speech. If we have free speech, we will win. The things that they have made hates a uh, hat speech are, are things like um, that will have in at least in Europe that will have the police come to your door are things uh, like saying that men can't be women or that uh, something like some ladies said uh, lesbians can't be men. And so the police are opening up an investigation. <laughs> like, don't you guys have more important things to do? It seems like, yes, there are more important things for you guys to do. It's, it's weird that you're making this a priority and it's like, who's, pulling the strings on this who's making this who's making this a priority anyway uh like how subscribe support channel subscribe start getting on odyssey because you know bitch shoots out the door any day now probably and uh being on youtube it's like that's a real you know it's a real uh thin ice on youtube it's not just for this little channel but i kind of i, I kind of like if you if youtube suddenly decided to eat a lot of phantom menace confiscate channels or the the, the channels in and around that community it's like there's nothing that's going to stop them. So, I mean, you might as well build up the uh, the Odyssey uh, footprint. Now you can use a Google voice burner number if they, they need it. They use a phone number, not a uh, email. But, I mean, just use a Google number and you can hop on there. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next uh, episode of That Rapper Guy 2024.